when they sent me to an obscure hillside somewhere near Wigan to see the Three Sisters. I thought it seemed an odd spot for Russian theatre, but happily it turns out this Three Sisters is a racing circuit. And I'm sure today's sprint meeting will give us more than a few dramatic moments. At first sight, sprinting looks uncomplicated. Timing strut lined up with magic eye. Then wait for a green light. Get act together. And go when ready. Fastest lap wins. Then it begins to get harder. Running fastest over a 1200 yard course takes a lot of skill. But just getting started can be tough enough. The engine stall, cut out. It's got an electronic gear change and it stalled the engine during the change. Yet when you watch Alan Newton do it perfectly in a Cosworth V8 March, what could be easier? So brace yourselves, this is what it feels like to do a run in 40.9 and a bit. You can race any type of car as long as it satisfies the safety regulations and you don't try to hoodwink the scrutineer. Yet there are still those who, well, fib about engine size and performance in their class. What sort of tricks do people try and pull on you? Uh, try and enter their own class and of course they've then got to be uh, upgraded to the next class and they don't like that because the comp competition's better in that class. With queues of similar cars waiting to race in different competitions, can it be that it's getting complicated again? It's the first round of the Longton Championship, um, but various other clubs and associations use this for their own championship, the ANWCC, the SD34, the CCNC, the Lang. It's all very complicated. Shouldn't have asked, really. But what's great is that everyone's friendly, very, very friendly in some cases. This must be a very harmonious marriage, both racing, both racing the same car. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it's harmonious. It depends if she beats me. I'm getting some secret coaching, though, at the moment from uh, some of the other people in the, uh, in the team, so... A lot. <laughs> a lot of coaching. What do you drive on the road? Uh, well, this is my road car. This is perfectly street legal car. There's nothing removed from it, all the interiors in it. I just drive along here, put the numbers on it, put a timing strut on the front and uh, off you go. Last year, I um, actually won the championship, but uh, due to an RAC uh, adjudication, uh, it was all made null and void, so oh no, we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're chasing it again this year. So what does a Super 7 racer drive day to day? Uh, a Super 7. After 12 years of having a company car, that uh, changed at Christmas, so now it's my everyday car. Yeah. I just hope that there's no prangs or uh, engine problems. Uh, Andrew, I'm not in the habit, you understand, of making suggestions like this, but could you just pop in the back of the truck with me for a minute? No problem. <laughs> Andrew, I'd stay in there if I were you. People here are so friendly. Not only will they strip off and give you all their kit, but now Bev's offered to give me a ride around the track. Only 410 horsepower. Second gear. Third gear. Ease off. Dab of the brakes. Back on the power. Lovely Bev, just one more lap, please. Well, perhaps not. Ouch. That's yes. it. That's how it's not going to go. They'll know what it looks like as your bolts have come what's, up. What's caused this? Yeah. Just one of those things, it happens from time to time. You're so calm. Well, you've got a camera here, haven't you? I'll wait till you switch off and then I'll start. Sorry. A final whoops, and suddenly the day's over. Time for prizes and the fastest lap trophy. Well, Alan really deserved that award today. Not all the drivers can go home with a prize, but they all go home with a smile on their face. There's plenty for the spectators to smile about as well.